2024 is set to be an interesting year for American blockbusters. We've got Dune 2, another Planet of the Apes movie, and apparently Gladiator 2. But there's also this Civil War movie by the guy who made Ex Machina, Annihilation, and Dread, which were all pretty great movies. I've got no doubt that Civil War, which seems to follow a journalist on an odyssey through war-torn America, will be pretty good. But this is what, why, how. I'm a history and politics channel, so what the heck is the setting of this movie? Let's take a look at the trailer. 19 states have seceded. The United States Army ramps up activity. The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. The three-term president assures the uprising will be dealt with swiftly. Okay, bam, 10 seconds in, we got a whole lot of exposition. There's some sort of three-term president, and nearly half the states have seceded, but not cleanly. They're in at least two factions, the Florida Alliance and the Western forces. We'll see what states make up those alliances in a second, but next we got some humans doing human stuff, which is pretty key to a movie I hear. There's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Seems like it's for the best. Alright, just to comment briefly, the idea that people are so exhausted by the news they just shut down isn't a strange one. It happens in real life. Americans increasingly distrust national news and are looking toward places like Facebook and Twitter for political information instead. Believe it or not, those places are worse. That's how radicalization, disinformation, and hatred can catch light, hypothetically speaking. Okay, the next image we see is an American flag with two stars. This seems to me to most likely represent what President Nick Offerman is about to say. Citizens of America, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Okay, so now we have the factions of this American Civil War. There's the Florida Alliance, which includes Florida, Oklahoma, and everyone in between. There's some sort of Northwestern Alliance, and of course, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California, which the two-starred flag probably represents. I'm gonna be blunt, this makes absolutely zero sense. Let's ignore Texas and California teaming up for a second. Given the most charitable interpretation, we can say that President Nick Offerman has used the military to seize an unprecedented third term in office. The Supreme Court, Congress, and every state run by the opposition party and probably half of Offerman's supporters probably in real life would refuse to allow this, but it looks like Offerman is a military dictator of some sort. Later on in the trailer, they have planes bombing civilians. They say that journalists get shot on the spot in DC. So this is a military dictatorship. But the military in real life definitely wouldn't violate the constitution to do this. And even if a president attempted to swap out high ups with loyal goons, Congress would probably drag its feet every step of the way. In real life, Joe Biden's routine nominations in the Department of Defense were blocked for months by just one senator. Congress has a lot of power, even over the military. Now, are there ways around this? Sure. In real life, Mark Milley and other Joint Chiefs planned on resigning one by one if Trump ordered them to do things they didn't want to around January 6th. This would make Trump so unpopular that he would lose any support for keeping power. Of course, that didn't happen, mostly because Trump willingly left the White House, even if he did refuse to concede. But one could imagine that if the Joint Chiefs left, then maybe Trump could do something funky. Even if Nick Offerman tried to seize power, the US Army is too institutionally pro-constitution and pro-democracy to do anything so crazy as to create a dictatorship. What people believe is very important. Let's go back to the map of the Civil War though, because to be frank, these alliances make no sense. America is so politically polarized along ideological lines that Texas and California would never team up against a dictatorship. Even if we imagine it takes place, let's say, 10 years in the future, when Texas has, as the prophecies have foretold, votes blue, then the state of Texas would be so divided between Republicans and Democrats that it wouldn't send any soldiers to attack DC as the trailer depicts. The Florida Alliance over there makes more sense, but up in the Northwest, we've got liberal Oregon and Washington team up with conservative states like Idaho and Wyoming. Plus, for some reason, every state between Maine and New Mexico seems to stick with the dictatorship. That means left-wing states like Vermont and Massachusetts team up with conservative states like Missouri and Kentucky because they love Nick Offerman so much. These coalitions of states, they don't make any sense at all, except for maybe like a geographic level, the Northwest, the Southeast, and the two big states against everybody else. But people don't really think of themselves like that. 
Obviously, the breakdown of an American civil war would be liberal versus conservative, urban versus rural, democrat versus republican. We can see the movies trying to highlight cultural divisions because some of the soldier characters look like stereotyped liberals, so I don't get why they wouldn't go with an alliance of states that actually makes sense, not just on an abstract rational level, but for the public that watches this movie. Even if Nick Offerman, let's say, is maybe some sort of once-in-a-century third-party candidate, then he wouldn't get support to be a dictator, or if he managed to find support, it would have to be from the Democrats or from the Republicans. If he's some sort of extreme centrist candidate, then the states that secede would be maybe the most politically radical ones, the conservative states of the Great Plains and the liberal states of New England, for example. If he's a democratic dictator like Frank Underwood from House of Cards or something, then the opposition he'd be facing would be from the thousands of anti-government militias, conservative factions in the military, state guards, and of course every Republican institution in the country, including the Republican Governors Association. Even then, those factions probably wouldn't secede from the country. Texas and Florida and every conservative state would refuse to recognize him as president, declare their guy president, and only march on the Capitol if things got heated enough and they had enough guns to do so. So it wouldn't be America versus some secessionist country, but America versus America. The same thing would happen if Offerman was a Republican, but instead the GOP Duce would face down urban guerrilla fighters, democratic states, and probably a very critical United Nations. So the alliance of states would be pretty close to the 2020 election map, or a map of governors by party. Now if you zoom in, a real civil war would not be this clean. You'd have many different rebels or militia groups, since US citizens are already pretty armed. Cities in conservative states and rural areas in liberal states would be a hotbed of insurrection against their state governments. But I don't think a crisis situation in America would throw states into open war against each other. What would happen, most likely, is kind of what happened in Argentina or Italy or a dozen other countries in the Cold War. The government using illegal force to crack down on rebellious political movements. Imagine dictator Offerman using the FBI, CIA, or goon squads to round up protesters, assassinate radicals in the opposite direction, and suspend legal rights. You probably have those groups fighting back using extreme force, so targeting military bases, government buildings, or even universities with bombings or shootings. There'd probably be plenty of civilian-on-civilian -civilian violence too between gangs of radicals. Now, if that case gets even worse, maybe you could imagine state governors picking sides. Some states might refuse to cooperate with federal law enforcement, they might close US military bases or stop cooperating with the government in a million different bureaucratic ways. The federal government might then try to crack down on a state that is in basically a state of rebellion and try to arrest a governor maybe, but I think at that point it gets to be very implausible. In any case, the worst possible path for America is more like Weimar Germany than 1860 America. So what's the big deal? Why am I picking on this trailer so much if the movie's probably going to be okay? Well, I really think it's an issue with courage. The movie wants to tell a story which will shake people up. People in the comments on social media were saying the trailer made them anxious. America is at a point where politics is extremely heated. It makes a ton of sense to tell a story about that. But a truly courageous story wouldn't be afraid to be honest about how we're divided. Teaming up Texas and California so clearly makes it obvious that this film is trying to avoid political controversy by shrugging aside the liberal versus conservative divide in America. I don't know if you can make effective commentary on the state of America and ignore those divides at the same time. A movie even more courageous than this one would depict those divides clearly and honestly to force Americans to look at our neighbors and wonder, who do these divides serve? What happened to politics in this country that we are so hateful of each other? And how can we bring the union back together? But this is just a little bonus video. I've got a bigger one halfway done, so don't forget to subscribe. And thanks to my supporters on Patreon, user SEQ, and Marklin. Adios.